express your creativity to the glory of God. Enjoy watching. Hello everyone, Samantha here. I pray all is well with everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing a journaling page for the Jesus Journal Junkies um, March Journal Challenge where reading and studying the gospel according to John and today again is day four and it's John chapter 3 verses 1 through 21 I already read the verses before I got on and I know what I'm going to journal on but I do want to take the time to show something these are two templates I used previously and I ended up having to make another verse map template I also decided to not only use the templates, but to also um, do some in my journaling book because the templates can be a bit much to do every day to write out all those verses. So I'll do some art journaling with just one verse. For the rest of the video, you're going to see me using a verse map that I created and I'll share later in the description section. Okay, so right here I created another sheet. This is actually purple, but um, the border is purple, but because um, of my print, I need to fix the, um, put some more color ink in it. It came out kind of reddish. But anyway, so um, the boxes are not that big because um, what's required, like this part right here is just a scripture verse. It's just one verse. Because it's verse mapping. So you're really just working on pulling out one verse. Then the parallel verses. I mean verses that are in other versions. Like for example, if I write the King James Version here. I can write um, maybe the New American Standard Bible Version here. Or I can write the Holman Christian Standard Bible Version here. Or maybe the New Living Translation version here, depending upon what all the Amplified and the other versions. Just also, too, so you can do, like, cross-checking between the parallels. So, some people like to do that. I like to do that as well. Especially if I'm using the NLT. A friend of mine and I were talking yesterday, and we mentioned, and we were discussing how um, in the NLT and the NLV, there's certain verses that's missing. So even though I do use those versions, um, sometimes just to get an easier read or if I'm sharing with somebody, I always look at the King James Version too to make sure that it's not like said differently or, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell me you need to look in the King James Version. So, and there's also the English Standard Version some people might use too, which is an easier read for many people. So right here, I put definitions in this box. And then right here, cross-reference scriptures, right? So other verses that give, that will help you understand that verse, the scripture verse that you chose, the initial key verse, then application, and then prayer. And because the, the boxes are so small, because this is not like a full-blown study of a chapter, this is called verse mapping. So you're really just working on that one verse. And of course, the... The, um, the boxes could be bigger because you can do more in-depth studying with the verse and a person can do that if they want. But I found that this is enough information if you just want to do the topical study of the verse. Um, and sometimes it will be enough for even a, even a deeper um, study. It depends on how big the person writes, right? So, but this is the one that I used yesterday. This is the one I'm going to use in this video and somebody, um, I put it in the Jesus Journal Junkies group um, yesterday, this one. And um, another sister there, she's doing all, she's also using verse mapping. And so um, when I put up my, um, when I put my picture in the group, one of the sisters said, well, can you tell me what is verse mapping? Can you just show me how to do it? So I told her I was going to do a video today. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use this one, this one, because this is the one I'm going to share with the group. And also I'll put it in the description section as well. Okay. So with that being said, let me close this. And I'm going to try to 
see if I can show my compute my laptop screen as I do this. So just bear with me for a moment. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So the first thing I want to say is that okay, I'm gonna put the verse here that I am going to journal on, right? So it's actually John. Three, John three, verses 17. And it says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here, right? So for God. sent not his son into the world to condemn the world But that the world through him might be saved. And that's John. Three seventeen. So I could have called, I could have wrote, written a little bit bigger, but that's okay. You're right. I just wanted to make sure I was going to have enough space. Now the parallel verses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to Bible tools. Bible tools. Parallel. Parallel. Bible 2's compare Bible. Right here, I'm not going to write out John 3, 17 in different verses. I'm just going to note different words and put some notes here. So it may not be filled up. So, or we can even go to Gateway. So, so which one? I want to see John 3, 17. So I'll put him. Bible 2 is parallel, right? And once I did that, you see I wrote right here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Hold on, let me make sure. Let me see, maybe bring it up a little bit and move this over. Hold on. And I'm going to write off to the side and then show when I finish writing it. So, right here. So, you probably can see that. Let me move this down a little bit. Probably a little better. Move it closer. Let me move it closer, rather. Yeah, I think that's better. Right here. Good. So, if you notice right here, it's saying N NIV version, right? So, there's a place on here where I can click it. That's the scripture format. Oh, one second. Let's go here. Okay. I remember how I, I think I remember this before. Hold on. Give me a moment. I don't want it all to be, um, how did I change this before? Okay, wait a minute. So, hold on. Oh, okay. So, versions up here. I'm sorry. So, you got to go up and one, both of them are saying NIV right now. So, because I have the NO, the, uh, the King James version is what I wrote down. Let me see if there's any words that's different it says um let's go to 17 so it says so this is how the king james the the niv says it. it says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him okay so it's basically the same thing the niv um uh, but to say the king james says 
can, but that the world do him might be saved. And they say to save the world. So it's the, basically the same thing. So let, I'm going to go over here and look at, um, let's look at the, the message Bible. See how the message Bible says it. So the message Bible says it. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son to merely. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger. So in parallel, in the parallel verses section, which I'm going to show you, I'm going to go. I'm going to put message Bible. Um. Accusing finger. And I'm going to put the word condemn, condemn there. Because that's what. In lieu of. Condemn. They put accusing finger. So God didn't go to all the trouble. Of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger. Telling the world how bad it was. Wow. Telling the world. How bad it was. Okay. He came to help. To put the world right again. Okay. He came to help. To help. To put. The world right again. Okay. I'm probably going to look up one more. I'm going to look at the Amplify and see how the Amplify puts it. Right? So that was the message. The Amplified version. Let's see how they say it. A Amplified. That's the... Uh, no, down some. I see it here. Amplified version. Why am I not seeing the Amplified version here? I can always go to Google and put the Amplified version. I'm seeing the King James, the New American Standard, the New Revised Standard, King James. Got um, what is that? It has different. Okay, the New King James version. The English Standard. Let me see what the English Standard version looks like. Okay, so seventeen. Okay, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So the English Standard Version is saying it the same way. So I just want to really see if I can find out. Ameri the, okay, that's the American Standard, but I want to see the Amplified Version. All right, let's just look at the American Standard Version. And then we'll I'll go back to Google and put in the Amplified version. Because that's what you can do too. You don't have to use this Bible tool if you don't want to. For God did not send, didn't for God sent not the Son. And I don't like that. It's it his son. For God sent not the Son into the world to judge the world, but the world should be saved through him. So, okay, so condemn. I don't know. I don't know about that. Because God will judge but you know I'm gonna leave that alone for right now but I prefer the other ones so far okay so let me see this um go back to the ampliff I'm gonna go to Google right and I'm gonna put in amplified version amplified version John three 17. Okay. So amplified. So John 3 right here. Now it's going to take me to gateway. um, The Bible gateway. Right? So John 3, 17. Let's see how they say it. How they, how, what is it? For God did not send the son into the world to judge and condemn the world. Okay. So they're using the word judge too. That is to initiate the final judgment of the world. Wow. So, yes, remember I say, yes, I know God is going to judge, but it says that's not why he sent Jesus to initiate the final judgment at that moment, but the, but that the world might be saved through him. 
Okay, so you know what I like? I'm going to leave John 3.17 for the Message Bible here. And that's giving me enough notes for now. So I know right here. So I wrote by Message Bible, accusing finger, condemn, telling the world how bad it was. He came to help to put the world right again. So I kind of paraphrased it. But I just want it. This is basically notes. So I'm going to even put um, the word notes here. So if anyone reads it, they will know that I'm not literally like writing what the scripture said. Those are my notes. Right. For me to understand. OK, so now it says definition. So for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google again, and I'm going to put Bible dictionary. Now, in a way, here's my other Bible. I do not want to use. Oh, you know what? For a moment, I want to go to my Bible dictionary. I have a couple of them and I want to look up condemn in this one not online they have um bible dictionaries online but i just i like flipping pages in the book i just i just love doing that i don't like everything to just be computer 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 so yeah. okay so i'm looking up the word condemn okay so to judge generally okay so so, to judge generally in the negative sense of finding someone guilty. Okay, so I'm going to put that definition here. It says to judge, I'm going to put, it says condemn, to judge generally in the negative sense. Of finding someone guilty. Okay. So God is trying to help. He's not trying to say, oh, because we already, we already know that we all fall short to the glory of God. And the word itself convicts and lets us know that we are wrong um, with cer in certain areas of our life. The word convicts us, but God is not looking to judge us generally in a negative sense. You know, you're guilty and that's it. Boom, bam, that's it. You're going to H, you're going to hell. No, no, God, don't. That's not the love of God. Um, but one day we're all going to um, be judged for what we do. And those without Jesus Christ are going to go to hell. We don't like to say that. It doesn't sound pleasant, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father but through him. And eternal salvation, eternal security and salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. That's how we get saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we confess with our mouths and believe it in our heart, we shall be saved. We can't get ourselves right. You know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He's our savior. You know, we couldn't pay the price for our sins. And, you know, we can't work our way into heaven. We're not good enough. We're not perfect. So Jesus died for us on that cross. So, you know, we, you know, we don't want to tell people, oh, you're going to hell. However, if they don't accept Jesus Christ, you know, that's it. That's it. That, that will be their eternal, um, their place of eternity. And it is a place of eternity. Heaven is eternal and so is hell. So, um, you know, if you listen to this and you don't know Jesus Christ, you know, he loves you just as you are. He said, come as you are. He's not looking for you to be beautified to, or, or decked out to go to church. You can say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life right where you are. It doesn't matter where you are. You do not have to go inside of a church to get saved. 
we as believers, we assemble together in the church as a body of Christ. We assemble together in various places, building each other up to learn the word of God. But that is not what saves us. It's Jesus that saves us. So, um, and if you have any questions about salvation and um, you want to learn more about Jesus, I mean, I don't know everything, but I know I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And I can share with you what the Lord has taught me thus far. And um, I'll be willing to pray with you and lead you in a salvation prayer for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. And as a matter of fact, you don't even need no one to lead you in that. You could just say, Jesus, come into my heart. It is not complicated at all. And if you listen to this, you know, you can, if you don't understand, read Romans chapter 10, 9, 10, you know, you see in this in this um video I'm going to look I'm looking at different versions to get an understanding but again if you want to talk with someone my email is gloryexpressed at gmail.com or you can go to Jesus outside the walls ministries at gmail.com and leave a request there my husband and I will get back to you and um and also you can watch videos on a playlist. I also have a playlist of some encouraging messages too. So that may um help you as well. But yes, you can ask Jesus to come into your heart anytime, any place. And I pray that if you're watching this and you haven't, that you would in Jesus' name. So anyway, anyway, going on to saved. Yes, yeah, see, saved Savior. Jesus is our Savior. So let's look at this Bible dictionary. This is the Ehrman's Bible dictionary. Let's look up the definition of saved here and here. So, so God did not come into, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. So, okay, let me go back. I'm going a little bit of saved right here. Save. Okay, see salvation. They don't have V-E-D here. So they have save, save, see salvation, save, savior. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to self. So. Oh, okay. I see what they're saying now. Okay. Got to go back a minute. Go back a bit. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is salvation. Save. Salvation in Old Testament can refer to an event of rescue from an intolerable situation or great danger. There's a lot here. So let me see if I can. Okay. Um, okay. It says in the New Testament, salvation and related words appear and uses other than for. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is this is a lot here. It's good, but for the interest of time, I'm going to put Bible definition, and you can do this too, Bible definition of saved. Okay. Now, I could tell you what saved is, but I'm going to show you, take you through this process of using the Bible tools. Okay. So. Because I could tell you, but some people, they want references that they can go to. So I might as well just do. But save means you are born again and you are going to heaven. Jesus saved you. You will not go to hell. That's it in a nutshell. That's it in a nutshell. You will not go to hell. You are going to heaven. Because you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I might just have to put that here. Because I'm struggling to find it here. In a very short way. It's salvation. Deliverance. Let's see right here by the grace of God. And so, what I'm going to do, okay, so right here, it says, Salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering. To save is to deliver or protect. 
The word carries the idea of victory, health, or preservation. Sometimes the Bible uses the word saved or salvation to refer to temporal um, physical de deliverance such as Paul's deliverance from prison. So sometimes it can be saved from a situation. You'd be like, you know, it's an old show. They say saved by the bell. Like that's temporal. But in Jesus Christ, salvation, being saved, that's eternal. It's eternal. So I'm going to put the definition here. And of course, if you want, you can do more research. So saved. I'm um I'm, I'm shorting it going to heaven eternally secure salvation through Jesus Christ and this is by faith by faith a gift of grace eternal salvation this is not temporal so he not only saves our souls from hell but he saves our life from destruction so it's not just this pie in the sky we're waiting for it's even now deliverance Okay, so I wrote that there for definitions. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight the words condemn and saved, right? And right here, I'm highlighting the Message Bible here, John 3, 17. Okay, so, so far, this is what my verse map looks like. So, I understand what these were. So, when you look up the definitions, it gives you more understanding of the scripture verse. So, God is not did not send his son of the world to, like, judge generally in a negative sense. To find guilty or, like, uh, to point an accusing finger. To say, you're naughty, 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 bad, bad, bad. He came to help but put the world right again. That's that salvation. He came to help us, to save us. He doesn't want us to go to hell. He wants us to be with him, to go to heaven with him. He wants a relationship with us now and forever. So cross-reference scriptures, and I think sometimes this happens to be my like almost favorite part, because what I do is I put in, I go to google.com, and then I put in John 3.17. I'll put in the verse that I want in Google. And this is what happens. Bible Gateway will come up. But normally what comes up too is also Bible Hub. And I just like Bible Hub. I've been using Bible Hub for so long. When I do, um, what is it? Um, verse mapping and Bible study. Now, you see there's a section here. I could also go here to look up the word condemn too on Bible Hub. You can, because when you put in a verse, they have all the different, and that's what I should have done to begin with, but that's okay. They have the different translations here too. And sometimes I'll use that because like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'll find an amplifier. Yeah, I did, but I did find it. But look, look at all the different versions they have here. Right, I should have just stuck with um Bible Hub to begin with. I don't know what I was thinking, but that is okay. So you get to see various various things, the Bible tools and other stuff. So let's see. We can even before we move on, let's look up the word for the condemn. So to judge, to decide, right? Um, right here. How do we, how do they say that in um Greek? Because this this is a New Testament. Um. Crino, Crino. Mm. Okay, and let's see what they have. Excuse me. Oh Jesus, it's getting late. Um, save Sozo, Sodizo, Sodizo. Yeah, 
And yeah, that's another thing I'm going to put here too. Deliverance from sin. Because I'm going to say deliverance from what? Deliverance from sin. That's a part of salvation. Um, from the penalty and the power of um, sin. Deliverance from sin. I'm going to put power and penalty. In my little box here. Save, heal, preserve, rescue. Okay. So let's look at the cross-reference scriptures. The cross-reference scriptures are other scriptures that are connected with that verse that can give you further understanding. So right here, John 3, 34, for the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the spirit without limit. Yes, that is part of being saved. But I have the testimony, that's John 3, 34. So I'm going to put some notes here. I'm not going to copy down the scriptures, but I'm just going to put some notes that come to mind when I read these cross-reference scriptures that's connected to John 3.17. So, John 3.34. So, um, God gives the Spirit without limit. That's a part of salvation too, being born again. Um, but I have John 5.36, but I have testimony more substantial than that of John. For the works the Father have given me to accomplish, the very works I am doing, testify about me, and the Father has sent me. Okay, so this is like God sending Jesus, right? Himself in the second person. God himself in the second person. So John 538, Jesus sent by God. And let me say say this there's another part of a verse map that um i used to use and i actually have it on the other sheet um i could have put it here and connect prayer and application together so i might just go ahead and revise this as well but it's like the before and the after verses right that's another thing too i want to say see i already read before i got online so i know the context you know, um, so if you're doing a verse map, I, I would recommend that you read the whole chapter, like the verses before, the verses after, uh, um, a context for the verse, because you don't want to just take the verse out and just run with it. So, but like I said, I had already read before I got online, so I have my context. But again, in some verse maps, you know, like this one right here, I have before and after verse context notes so um that's an option too if you maybe you can make up yourself a verse map you don't need to use a template either i was looking for my old journal so i can show how i did this used to do this a while ago but i cannot locate that journal today so i don't know it's very very old and um i don't know okay so anyway so let's go john six twenty nine. Jesus applied the work of God is this to believe in the one he has sent, right? Remember I said that scripture earlier, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. I didn't quote the whole thing, but I just quoted it just now. So, yes, Johnson. So that's a part of salvation, right? So I'm going to put John 6, 29, believe in Jesus. And this goes back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's my before verse, right? That's a before verse. But since I'm doing a verse map on John 3, 17, I didn't mention because the whole thing I was, was on my heart to focus on was that so much God didn't come to condemn the world. And then when I do my application and my prayer, you're going to see... Because it's like, what does this teach us about Jesus? Jesus didn't come. God didn't send Jesus to condemn. Jesus did not come to condemn. Came to save. So, John 6, 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. 
So I'm going to put um, some notes here for that. And I'm going to put John 6.38. Um, Jesus will... Jesus will... Is the father's... To save us. Okay. So I might just write in my own notes here. Just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father. So also the one who feeds on me will live because of me. So you see that right there. John 6, 57. We will live. That's that salvation again. We will live because of Jesus. We do live because of Jesus. We will live because of Jesus. Okay, also two, oh. but I know him because I am from him and he sent me, John 7 and 29. So God sent Jesus, right? And somebody said, but you're saying God and Jesus and Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus is God in the second person, Father God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But I will say this to you. There's a scripture that says, great is the mystery of godliness. No one can see the kingdom of God if they are not born again. So if somebody's watching this and they're not born again, then it's going to, then let me tell you, <clears throat> even as believers, we have to say, God, give us revelation of what you're saying. It's the spirit that bears witness. We as believers, true believers of the Lord, we don't believe because some pastor told us or some preacher told us. It's the spirit of the Lord. And that's how you know that you know that you know that you know. He gives us a witness. And it's like, oh my God, your eyes are opened up. Your eyes are opened up. Your spirit, you're, you're born again. You're born of a new spirit. You are now spirit, right? Your spirit is one with the Lord's. One spirit, one faith, one baptism. And it's like, it's amazing. Because if it was about head knowledge, it wouldn't work. It couldn't. But when your spirit bears witness, when God gives you his Holy Spirit and he opens up your eyes and he talks to you, my God, what can you say? Nothing else will, you know, everything else is not the truth because you have a relationship with God. He made, he revealed himself to you in a powerful and mighty way. And, and, and that's it. It just settles it. Right. That is so awesome. So it's not about, oh, I read some Bible and I, 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 I got some good information. So I believe, no, this is a spirit life. So, yeah. So got to be excited there. So I'm going to stop right there for that cross-reference scripture. So I have my notes here. So I wrote, God gives the spirit without limit. Jesus sent by God. Believe in Jesus. Jesus will is the fathers to save us. We will live because of Jesus. God sent Jesus. Again, you see this? God sent not his son into the world to, to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And I will even say, like, but the message Bible says he came to help us. When you read all the cross reference um verse um information, it does it does point to help, to save, to help, not to condemn, to save. So application. So this is where I'm gonna apply it to my life. So I'm putting um just as God the Father. sent Jesus to save and not condemn God has sent me to preach the gospel to preach the gospel hold on one second Preach the gospel Sent me to preach the gospel Teach the gospel I need another paper I can't take writing on this Single sheet like that Feels funny 
send the gospel and what I was about to go teach the gospel and encourage others. I am not to go around condemning others in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And then my prayer here. Oops, I'm so sorry. My prayer here. Father God, thanks for saving me and others. Thanks for dying for the world. To save us all. Please help me. To share. Your word. And lead. Others. To Jesus. Help me. Not to. Condemn, not that I can, to condemn or make others feel condemned or make, help me not to condemn or make others feel condemned. Forgive me, please. Oh, oh, please forgive me. Forgive me for the times. I used your word in any way wrong or to make others feel condemned. I will share your word with love in Jesus name I pray amen and sometimes you know we we may do that not intentionally but we call ourselves giving someone a tongue lashing and then, you know, the Lord is like, that's not, that's not right. That's condemning. Like, don't, don't, don't do that. And so, um, yeah. So, you know, gotta, I know for me, sometimes, you know, it's like, I'm, I don't, I don't think I ever say I'm gonna give this person a piece of my mind because I, I think I've learned, I used to say that, but, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rebuke them. And sometimes, you know, the rebuke, we got to just be mindful that the rebuke is coming from the Lord, not from us. So, yeah. And it's not to say that sometimes you speak the truth in love and some people still feel condemned. Like, yeah, I've been in that situation, too. And oftentimes it, that's more more times than I would like to admit, like, like, oh, you judging me. You gonna, I'm not judging you. I'm, I'm just telling you what the word says, like. You're going to have to take that up with God because I know in my heart that I have not done that to condemn you or make you feel bad, but it was to correct you. I'm not going to lie, but it wasn't to be coming across as like judgmental or condemning. Like, no, that wasn't the purpose behind it. But sometimes that's how people feel because they're convicted and the enemy is beating them up. So I've learned like lately I've been having to give some words and they weren't so flowery. It was like a rebuke. But what the Lord told me, he was like, pray for the person's mind and pray for their heart because the enemy is going to try to make them feel condemned when that's not what you're saying. You're not trying to condemn them. 
but because of where they are. And sometimes if we try to resist God, when he's trying to correct us, I notice that's when those feelings get more pervasive because we're trying to fight. We're fighting against the Holy Spirit. So we're kicking up against the pricks and then that don't work. So, yeah. So, but any, any rate, um, yeah, but see, if you notice here, I don't have a lot for parallel verses and that's okay. The whole thing is not to force to fit it. Like, if you don't have nothing else to say, that's enough, you know. And so, this is my verse map for John 3.17. So, this will be my Bible journal page for um the Gospel of John's March Journal. The Gospel According to John for March Journal Challenge Day 4. I am going to decorate a little bit. So, hold on one second. Yeah, so, like I said, I am going to decorate a little bit. So, I have this here. So, hold on. Let me get my... um I was going to try to get me some frog tape because I don't want that to move. Yeah, so, so I'm going to put this here. i put this here. So, you know, i got to find, put some more. So I don't want it to move on me. I'm going to actually do a, um, I'm going to just go ahead, I think, and um, color inside. I'm not going to, yeah, I think that's good right here. Which pen should I use? I think I'm going to use this scented blue one. This is the ones I got from Dollar Tree not too long ago. So, yeah, I'm going to do this like this. Cut across. Yep. So that's that, and then I'll just go ahead and color it in. Um, I'm waiting for a package from the post office. I don't know what these people are doing. Oh, God, if you're watching this and you pray, just please just pray. You know, I don't want to lose my cool with these people. But I know I'm going to have to file a complaint. Not that anybody will lose their job, but, you know, this happened before one time too many. They did get better, but I just want to make sure, like, you know, in our community, the community where I'm living, that we get served properly. You know, because postage is not free. People pay to get you know, things mailed, and, um, I don't like it when somebody's sending me something, and then, um, it's, like, taking forever to get here. It's not, they're not living up to the end of the bargain, and that's not right. So, I'm trying to see what should I put here. Maybe I'll put this right here, and then just color it in sometimes. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll color that in. And I think what I'll do is I'll just use, oops, I'll use these colors to color in the butterfly. So I'll let that be blue. It's pretty blue. Yep. That's what I'll do. I probably should have colored that in last, but that's all right. Let me see if I'm in frame. So, yeah, I'm going to have to tomorrow put in a complaint. And I'm thinking I may have to go in the morning. Oh, you know what? Let me try to just do this real quick because it looks like it's cheap out a little bit. I was thinking, like, I may have to go to work a little bit later to find out what's... Oops, it smeared my hand. Touched it. Okay. Um, To find out, like, what's going on. Because, um... Yeah, I may have to do that. I'm not sure yet, though. I'm not sure. I'm going to be very prayerful. But I could go to work. Um, as long as I get to work before 11, I could still go in. So I may have to go and find out what's going on because they're not even updating the status. Since 11 o'clock last night, they were supposed to come to yesterday. Um, 
and I stayed in all day and they never showed up and so I don't know what happened but I do know like um I don't want a chance going to work and then um it's something I gotta take care of in person and then things get all rerouted back and so when I get off when I um finish this video I'm gonna try to track it again I'm gonna see if they updated the status so I'm just being very very prayerful on how to approach this but I do know like I can't just not not do anything not say anything or you know because um it just doesn't feel like it doesn't it's just not right it's just not right and I don't want to speak anything negative um I'm just going to trust God that tomorrow I'm going to get this package. So I think I am going to um, arrive to work a little bit late tomorrow. Because I have to take care of this. I have to see what's going on. Oh, wow. I didn't mean to do that with the um, ink. That's all right. So, that's okay. I kind of want to put some of that purple in here. I really like these pens. These pens are real nice. But they gotta dry. I had gotten these from a Dollar Tree a while ago. I like the way the ink flows out of it. I want to do another video after this. Um... So maybe I maybe I should just leave it all pink. Yeah, I'm gonna have pink. I think it's gonna look kind of awkward. I don't. So, so it's just, it's just a little decoration. Tomorrow I think I'm gonna do a, um. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh yeah, I know tomorrow. I'm thinking like, what do I have to do tomorrow? I think tomorrow I'm not gonna be able to do one like this. I have to do something quick. Cause tomorrow I have to do some writing. So I wanna have fun with this challenge, but I just don't want other things to go neglected. Um even though it's it's all a word, it's like I can't I can't lose, but I also at the same token just wanna make sure. I do take care of the other things that I, I need to take care of. So, so anyway, so that's it. So, I you see a little, put a little bit of decorating on there. Because, you know, so tomorrow I think I'm going to be more artsy with it. So, I'm going, like, you know, back and forth with the different templates that I have. And, you know, um, see, I'm still going to probably use this one day if I feel like writing a lot. Tomorrow is 22 through 36. So that's actually 14 verses. So that's not that bad. See? So I might want to... See, tomorrow I want to be a bit artsy. But I'm liking the fact that it's not that much to write. So I might go ahead and do a regular template tomorrow. And then on day 7... Or day 6. Day 6. That's when I may be a little bit artsy with it. And I'll just use the verse map some days. Um, the the other the um the full format one, another day in art. So so okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. You know what? I'm gonna leave the link to Bible Hub and Bible Tools in the description section of the video along with this verse map template, just in case somebody wants to print it out. Okay, so thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.